Good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am so thankful to God for all that he's done. I've been off for over two months. Have never done that in the history of the Soul Factory. And I've been doing this since 1996. Never done that. Am I saying that I never needed that? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying I, I, I've never done that. One of the things that is a, a blessing to me on the other side of this, of trusting God this way, is that I was able to say to God in my prayers, my speaking to God in my meditation and listen to God. God, I didn't know you this way. On this walk, we have to, and you will find yourself in, and, 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 and it's all encased in, in, the, in the seasons series that you've heard. But there'll come a time when you'll realize, God, I don't know you in that way. I don't know you in that way because over the years, I have not trusted you in that way. And I didn't get to know you. See, the, to, to, to know God, to know something, it's like love, to know it, it has to be expressed. It has to be felt. You can't, you can't tell somebody what if, what, uh, talk about love, just using words only, and someone gets that deep impact of love. And so in my case, there's a way that I could say, God, I didn't know you. But I, 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 I won't go into this, my testimony too, too, too deeply because I really just discovered something this morning. I, I was looking through my journal for, I was looking for some notes that I took somewhere. And I said, well, maybe they're in my journals. I couldn't find them in my different notebooks. So I looked at my journal and I saw my prayers written. And I smiled because they came true. At the beginning of the year, and throughout the last, last year, we were talking a lot about being a new creation, leaving the old behind, going into the new. We, we, we even approached the fast that way. The importance of walking in that born again space, that, that space of new creation. And sometimes, you know, and I want to give you this picture. In our surrender to God, we, we, we surrender our, all of our members to God because all of these members used to serve something else for a reason. Used to respond a certain way. Um, was moved by a certain voice. So this is why Paul could say, you know, there was things he wanted to do, but 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 what was what was in these members? And God wants to take over my whole body. He wants my whole body, my whole self, my whole soul, all of me to be surrendered. And I'm saying that to you because sometimes we 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 hear these things, but we don't recognize when they show up in our space. And so I recognize mine. And, and, and one of the main things I, I want to say, because I want, I want to encourage you about prayer. I want to encourage you about believing. I want to encourage you about changing, breaking your old habits, the, your old way of thinking. You know, your habits are not just in your behavior. It's also in how you think. It's how you appro approach it. And so I read a book that said to me, um, said, do, when this happens, do something different. Just, just do something different. Respond differently. React differently. Think differently. See it differently. See, see beyond yourself. See, this is how we get to the place God wants us to be. So I'm going to read this little piece out of my journal. December 28, 2022. 
It says this. Um, I, in it, I was talking about uh, 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 they would choose to go on. Okay. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, show me someone who could do a particular thing. And that particular thing was in 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 my my um with, with, with Deron in terms of some of his progress and some of the things that he needed in physical therapy. And that's, at this point, he was becoming too heavy for me. It was I, I you know he was too heavy. I couldn't do it. So this is what I said. I said, uh uh uh. I ask God for the, and this is what I said, I prefer someone from Africa or of African descent. If it's a woman with a child, perhaps I can give them the use of my basement because at this point, I'm just putting it out to God. I said, however, Deron needs someone strong. So I get this, some responses, different responses to me needing assistance in more than one way. But in, in, in Deron and I needed assistance. So I get this, these responses. And the first response was a woman. Um, another response was a woman. They came through. I interviewed them. I only needed a little bit of time here and there. I didn't want um, a full time. And even though I shared what I needed, once the person got here, they wanted what they wanted, and they was hoping that I could do more, but I knew I couldn't do more. I didn't need more. Didn't want more. I'm going to say it that way. So I go through that. And at this point, I'm feeling like that's it. Okay, well, and my prayer always to God is, um, I'm going to ask you, and then I'm going to wait. That same day, I went and searched again. And this time, listen to this. A male responded from Africa. Here was my prayer. God, I prefer. See, when, 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 when we go through, wake your ass up, wake it up. When we go through, be anxious for no thing, but by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your specific request known to God, do that. Do that. See, Oftentimes we have we, we have the things around us. So I just I just wanted to share that uh, another one, um, December 30th, 2022. I, I, I say certain things. I'm only going to say this point. I, I say I start with this. Presently, I am walking through a valley that reveals so many truths. That's how I saw. And I say to God, I feel so different um, in, emotionally right now. My prayer is. This to remember for me to remember to lean on God and not my own understanding. And then I ended this way. I am feeling a change nearing. I feel that a new chapter is approaching for me. I will wait for God's plan to unfold. That happened. Another one in January, the last one, this is what I said in there. I said, um, God, I feel that you're calling me to courage. I feel a call to courage. Please help me. God knows I need a courage. This was all right, December 30, 28th, December 30, and the beginning of January. Then we fasted. All of these things came true. Why am I saying that to you? Because as a believer, we have so, we have access to things that we're not using. And, and, and we're not, we, we may not be walking in. And, and listen, I, 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 I was chief. So I pray that this encourages someone, because I'm getting ready to get to the lesson now. I pray that this encourages someone to continue to wait on God. I say, God, I feel it near me. See, that's what faith to do. Faith, faith, see, sometimes we, we, we try to force an outcome. We try to, Force words into a situation where we don't have the we don't have the power language for, but we got the language of the spirit, which is just sometimes a, a stirring on the inside. Sometimes it's an agitation. Sometimes it's a trigger, but it's something that speaks. It just sometimes it's not words. You have to wait 
for the words if they're necessary, but you have to wait. So the name, so now I'm getting to this lesson. So anyway, good to see you all. Good to be back in, in, in this seat. Technically, I did not leave. I just left this space. I read probably, okay, listen to one book, read one book one time, listen to it twice. And aside from that, I read five other books. Because at this point, I'm at the space where I'm in, I'm, 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 I'm reflecting. So many places in my journal, oh, I've been writing, a, show me how to lead. See, I have to say, God, show me how to lead this ministry. All of this happened in January. Show me, show me how to lead your people. Because at this point, I am accepting the fact that Deron is not necessarily going to be uh, 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 the, uh, and I the way things used to be. And instead of running from it, I dealt with it, felt the, 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 the fear, the heaviness of it, the concern of it, the what, the why, the how. But I kept praying. God lead me. Oh, I'm, I, I need you to do this. So again, this message is called Fearless Love. Follow up. And I call it fearless love. You know, sometimes it, we don't see how fear and love can kind of be in the same place. But it really can be with, with those of us who have very good intentions. I have watched parents who love their children raise them by fear, not faith. These were believers. But what's the truth? What's happening in this world, the, 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 the uncertainty of what your child may be, you watching, you, 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 you hearing this, you watching other people's kids or excuse me, <clears throat> family start off a certain way. And then things change. I think Will, Will, Will said it pretty good when he was telling us to go up those stairs. And then the last uh, uh, Wednesday message when he talked about um, uh, uh, riding the wave. It's a flow. And while we expected to be in that flow and ride the wave, we have all of these things around us, these, 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 these flashing things around us, that causes us to take our attention off of God. So what I want to do today, the, the message is fear, this love, part one. But I want to do a spiritual checker. Every now and then, you just have to kind of do a check, check up and check in. Because when life happens, I think another thing that Will said was, uh, 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 that stayed with me, and that is in these seasons, Sometimes when, when, you, when you're in a season too long, I mean, this is, this is just fact. When you're in a season for a long time, too long, because maybe there's reasons that most of the time, fear reasons or some reason that you just don't know what's going on, that you, you, you plant roots in that season. Now, now you're rooted. You, 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 you have other things in that season. So when you go to the next place, Sometimes you don't, you, it's hard to leave that space because I think another thing he said is, oh, 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 uh, uh, obedience have a time limit. He talked about the lessons, the unlearned lessons. All of these, I can tell you, not today, but I can see all the unlearned lessons and those lessons weren't learned because I was afraid. Those lessons weren't learned because I just, I was afraid based on previous experiences. Because in some season, when there was a decision that I could have made, meaning, uh, 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 well, it was possible, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I didn't have enough courage. Um, if I did have the courage, I didn't know what to say. I just didn't see what I see now. And that's the blessing of, 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 of God. The, ble the blessing of God 
is that the truth is always trying, it's constantly trying to get to you, free you, liberate you, liberate you when you don't even know you're stuck. Sometimes you're stuck and you don't know that you're stuck because you've been in this, you, you've been carrying on like that for so long that something has become normal. Praise to our God, be to our God. He's not going to lead you that way. He's not going to lead me that way. He's constantly always presenting us with, with, with truth and, 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 and giving us an opportunity to experience love, his love, his way. So here's my first slide. Fear is love, part one. How did you get here? I've been singing this song. This 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 would make me ask this question. How did you get here? Did you come this far by faith? How did you get here where you are? By faith? By fear? Even in your relationship, God, by friendships, by family, by fellowship. Why, why? God's going to test all of these things. Your faith will be tested. Your friendships will be tested. Your family will be tested. Fellowship will be tested. COVID showed us, helped us see what our connection, whether we were connected to God or to each other. Whether what whether what kept me here was people or was it God's and God's mission and God's vision? Not, not the mission and vision of the soul factory per se, but even how that vision and mission fits into the big picture of, of God on mine. What got you here? See, the song says, I, I, I've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. What are you leaning on? Trusting in the Lord. I come this far by faith. Leaning on the word. Trusting in his holy word. How did you get here? It's very, very important to ask yourself that. What made you call out to God? Take that down. What, see, I'm saying that I'm saying that for two reasons. At the soul factor, our goal, right, is to change lives from the inside out by leading people into a growing relationship with Christ. We have evolved, right? So what we would what we say is, is in a nutshell, um, what we do, we encourage, we empower, we, we equip, we we serve. Uh, I like to say that perfectly um, imperfect, that is that is a, a piece of the involvement because we would say for those who believe and those who um, have not yet chosen to believe. And I like to say to the perfectly imperfect, imperfect for this reason, because those who believe are just as perfectly imperfect as those who don't believe. So, so when we say we are serving the community that is perfectly imperfect, listen, that expands our borders. Who, who isn't perfectly imperfect? Are we still serving that? Listen, how, how, how did you get here? What, when you called out to God, what made you do it? Now, here's the wonderful thing about God. God has a way to draw in all men to them. How did God draw you? See, once, say, you know, we, 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 we as, as a, a ministry that was strong in evangelism, strong in um, Deron doing plays and doing those things. And I used to always say, when Deron went out there, Deron catch the fish in the net. Now, I catch him hook by hook, but I tell you this, you're going to be smart. <laughs> when I'm done with you, you're going to know something because my gift is teaching. And so, but how did you get here? And I, I'm saying this, remember, I said this is a spiritual checkpoint. And sometimes if you if you didn't write that slide down or whatever or, 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 or screen, do, do a screenshot, just ask yourself, was it faith? Was it belief in which you could not see? 
Was it belief in the invisible? Or is it belief? Or is it is your tie connected to the visible? It's just important to know, to know that because this is faith is the starting point. What happens if we we come this far by fear, or we come this far by family, or we come this far by fellowship, or we come this far by friendship, but we didn't lean in on friendship? We came this far by fellowship, leaning on something. But when you come this far by faith, and faith is where you're going to start, what you leaning on? Because everything's going to be tested. And then when life tests you, it, it's not a good thing to lean, lean on the, on a, on a three-leg table that's supposed to be to have four. Because it'll tumble over. It'll be weak. It'll stumble easy. This is our spiritual checkpoint. How'd you get here? And if you don't remember writing your journal sometime today, remember how you got here. Because that's, that's where... Um, what am I trying to say? That's 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 where the good seed still is. See, when you want, once you come here, you come this far by anything other than faith. That adversary will have a whole lot to offer you in friendship. All they got to do is tell them and tell you you're going to leave. Okay, in friendship, why? Because all they got all they got to do is tell you this right here. Um, oh, uh, 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 don't tell, don't speak the truth to that friend. You're going to lose the friendship. Don't speak the truth to your family member. You're going to lose the family. Then fellowship. See, when I say fellowship, I'm talking about fellowship with people, believers. But there is a fellowship with God. There is a communion with God. There's a connection to God. If I did not have a connection to God, I would have been in a really bad place a really bad place in my soul. How'd you get here? That's your question. Slide two. Another parable he set before them. Read this with me. Saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while he was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed also weeds. And these weeds resemble wheat. Among the wheat and went on his way. So when the plant sprouted and formed grain, the weeds appeared also. Now, I, I want you to hear that because I, this is a scripture that came to mind when, when, when on one of, triggered by one of Will's messages, when he talked about having um, roots in an old space having roots from an old season because kind of hung in, not in the season too long, but not learning, not obeying, not surrendering to whatever God was putting before you. And before you know it, you, you know, you, you've been there long enough, you start planting stuff yourself. And then when you do mature and the light comes and it's time to move uh, to another season, what happens is the transition happens, but transition without transformation is a problem. When you move from season to season, that's a transition. You're transitioning from this place to that place. But the goal in the spirit is that you be transformed. Because if you're not, if you're not transformed, you'll go into a new, a new space with an old self. And then when you go in that new space with the old self, you'll do old things in that new space. You, 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 you will exercise old patterns in that new space. You'll be led by old energy in that new space. Therefore, although you're in a new space, God knows you're in a new space, but your space don't feel as new and you're not as liberated as God intended you to be from season to season. See, you can look at the season of winter and see that the trees is, are naked. But the other thing that's happening during the winter time is that it's rested, that, that the forest is resting. So your eyes may, may, may find yourself in another season instead of going in another season and, and seeing God in that season. Seeing God in that space. Your eyes 
Your, your eyes are still owned or are still being managed and operating under an old system. Versus someone who can see the trees in the wintertime and, and okay, the tree itself and understand to you, I look naked. To you, I look broke. To you, I don't look beautiful. To you, I look dry. To you, I don't, I'm not colorful. But to me, I'm resting. Because why do I why do I want you to see that? So that you can always, as Will said, at the, be at the top of those climbs, that place where you're climbing and you get to the glory of God. In each season, you're going to hit those stairs again, as he would say. And you will find God's glory even in those situations that you can you can see three or four different kind of ways. I see, you can look at the trees in the wintertime. You can pay attention to the forest, right? You pay attention to the forest. What happens in the wintertime versus the summer it, or spring? When there are leaves on the trees and when, there, when, when there's a fullness there, guess what? You can't, you can't see certain things. I have really, uh, driven to my neighborhood and said, oh, I didn't know that house was back there. Be I could only see that in the wintertime. In the summer, it was, the, it was covered because the greenery and, and, and all that the tree, the shade and all the things that the tree offered. But God is in every season. And in every season you're in, you can find God, but, but it's going to be important that when you get to that season, you remind yourself how you got here, not how you got to that season, because that's just life. But how you got here, what, why, what's your anchor? What is, what is, what is uh, grounding you? You know, uh, during my time off, I, I, I had to, to, to do some reflection. And deal with some things. And, 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 and at one point, at some point, I was really sad. And I, this is why it's important to know that you came, to, you come this far by faith. I think Felicia said in her message, this is how you want to know, because who do you call when you're in trouble? So now I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm in a certain kind of uh, a, a trouble of mind and some other things. And all I say to God, and I ain't going to say all I say, because I finally said to God, because I got tired of being in the funk. And I said this to God, God, I need help out of this. I need to be able to shake this. And I don't want to shake it like the world shake it, because it'll just come back. This needs to be pulled up from the root. And this is what I heard. Gratitude, Jim. But okay. Gratitude kept me sane. Because you know what gratitude will do? Gratitude will cause you to change your focus. See, prior to something, I was thanking God every day. Thanking God for his provisions. Thanking God for my family. Thanking God for something, you know, certain things. And then something happened. And, and I was, I, I felt like I was surrounded, just constant chatter. And I said, I got to stop this chatter. But I knew I couldn't stop the chatter. So I stopped and I said, thank you, God. And this is what I heard the Spirit say to me clearly. Prior to all of these things, were you thankful? Why aren't you thankful now? Because I can't get past something. Or something, something is disturbing me. Okay. You, you have a choice now. What you going to do? Where you going to put your attention? So I took my mind back to where it was before. Thank you, Father. Thank you for my family. Thank you for the fact that Deron is still here. Thank you for the, for, for the fact that there, although there are some challenges, it ain't the same, it's different, but it could be much worse. Father, I thank you. I thank you. So knowing how I got here by faith, uh, 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 I, 
absolutely matters. It absolutely matters. If, if I am going to make it with all of the things that are happening, if you are going to make it with all the things that can be happening, if you are going to um, get through these seasons that are going to happen and they're going to continue to happen, okay? And, and we know that. We know I, uh, if you're 30 years old, guess what you know? There has been four seasons for 30 years in your life. Every year, that's that that seasons aren't going anywhere. This is this is this is why God wants us to receive His love and to allow Him to love us, because He knows seasons aren't going anywhere. But God also knows that seasons are necessary. As I said, in the winter time, you can look at that tree, and your tree's outside. And you can talk about how bare they are. But until you see the value in resting, the value in trusting God, the value that a tree, uh, uh, that you can have in trusting God, because you've seen it enough, enough times. You have the experience. This too shall pass. You have the experience that every year, most of your plants and on the greenery on your tree come back. Every year. See, that's what gratitude is. Grati gratitude is um, in your winter month or in, your, in, in, in the winter months. Tree, don't worry. Don't be anxious for anything. This is time for you to rest. If, if you worry about these things, you're not going to rest. You know what season you're in? Because uh, 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 you can't do all the things you used to do. Rest. See, sometimes we can't do all the things we used to do. We do the ver opposite the, that, that the tree would do in the wintertime. We keep trying to produce a certain kind of fruit. We keep trying to look an old way. I said, get off of that. Even in this, I have a purpose for your life. So even in the wintertime, um, when it looks like the tree is doing nothing, bearing no fruit, producing no leaves, the lost its color and uh, 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 its beauty. It is doing something, it's trusting. It's resting in God. It's building that faith. And you could be the same way. You could be the same way. But I tell you, I'm telling you where the struggle is. The struggle is, how did you get here? If you didn't get here by faith, friendships are not going to keep you. There is a season where friendships are not going to keep you. We'll say it this way. Listen, strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Where are your friends at? And if you're not careful, you, you'll be asking where the friends at forever. Not forever, but now, now some energy, some feeling, some sadness, some abandonment, some something happens. No, no, ain't season for that. There comes a time. How did you get here? Because if it's not by faith, and it's by family, when family let you down, plenty of people have gone into deep depression. They have left the faith. Um, uh, 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 I've heard folks when things didn't go that way, Christianity, this doesn't work, that doesn't work. God said, listen. What that's what you see. What I'm showing you is that you you were leaning on something, and I'm trying to get you to lean on me. You're naked. It's your winter, it's your time to trust me. If I let you have all of the fruit and all of these things in your winter, you will never trust me to bring your fruit back to make you beautiful again, to make you look lively again, to show you that I love you, to teach you. That you knew me, but you didn't know all, know all of me. To let you get to know me in a more intimate way, Jill. To show you how deep my love is. How wide it is. How tall it is. You got to let me do that for you. You got to let them do that for you. Or you will never know a certain liberty. You got to let God have that. That's why all of these things have to be tested. Even fellowship. 
Felicia said it this, this, this way. She said there comes a time when what's, what's being built is your dependency on God. She has to trust that what God says happened in the springtime going to happen for it too. What happened for the summertime, that there will be a harvest. In a in, in a fall that the leaves will turn colors, you will see, uh, 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 and they will start to fall off to prepare you for the rest. But just what if you keep seeing that as somebody doing something or something doing something to you and not God doing something for you? Sometimes we get caught up in that part. I said, I'm doing something for you. But how do we get here? Let's lie to it. Started 25 again. See, but while he was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds that resemble wheat. I, I, I want you to hear this from the point of there was a time when all of us were sleeping. We were woke. We were sleeping. There's times we were we were sleeping in some of those seasons. Right? And and while we was in those seasons, we weren't woke. Uh, 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 we were in there trying to just trying to survive and we were doing our own thing. We were trying to produce fruit while we needed to be rested, while we shouldn't be trusted on God. We was finding confidence in ourselves instead of building confidence on God, in God. You were asleep. Here we go. But while he was sleeping, his enemy came and sold something. While you were asleep, when you didn't even know to look, don't judge yourself in this one. While you were asleep. But see, this is what God knows. If you could just know, there is good seed in this field, though. They're good, there's good seed in the field. This is why love, we, we, we have to approach love in a fearless way. For this reason, here we go. Wait a minute. Let me go. Verse 26. So when the plant sprouted and formed again, the weeds appeared also. And in this life, those weeds appear. And remember, they resemble wheat. So we, you, you need God right now in your life. You're at the place where you can't tell, you keep choosing the weed. Why do I keep making these kind of choices? Because it looks like weed. Why do I keep trying to make these choices for the weed? Because it looks like weed. But if you have come this far by faith, if that is where you have started, trust God to get you the kind, to the kind of love that teaches you to not only transcend, but to recognize sacred things from uh, unsacred things, to distinguish what's sacred from what's not sacred, even in your own personal life. We'll get there. Verse 27. And the servants and the owner came to him and, he, and, and said, Sir, do you not sow? Did you not sow good seed in your field? Then how is this? does it have Darnell shoots in it? Some of us get stuck right there. I just want to say, you know how I think because we were asleep. While you were sleeping, sometimes while you were, you weren't even mature enough, you weren't even ready for it. This is why you you get we have to stay away from trying to be perfected. I like something Gail Cox said to me recently, and you know she just shared. She said, "I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not pushing for a perfect to to to, to towards a per, per, perfection, but redemption." Not my perfect self, but a redeemed self. That's what I'm living for. That's the goal. That's what I'm striving. But when we striving for perfection. We spend so much time on how did this get in here? It's in there. It is in there. And leave the how to God. It, 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 the, the, the reveal will come. But, but when you start focusing on this part right here, you get stuck in something. Here we go. Verse 28. He replies to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, then do you want us to go and weed them out? This, 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 this is... Right. This is why it has to be faith. Because there comes a time where it, you can't do this. This one, this, 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 this happens from uh, 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 God has to raise you up to this self to get to this. You can't just do this any old time you want to. You can't produce this fruit just because you what, what you did before. Just because you feel great about yourself or you done read some books. 29. But he said, no, lest in gathering the wild wheat, the weeds resembling the wheat, you will root up the true wheat. 
along with it. Let them grow together until the harvest. And at the har and at harvest time, I will say to the reapers, gather the darnel first and build it in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my granary, or I'm going to say uh, into my barns. I think that's what it was saying about the virgin. Take that down. See, I, I, I want you to... I, I, I want you to see this scripture because this is the scripture for me to, 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 to say this. Let God have your life. Trust God with your life. Trust God. Listen, flaws and all. Trust God with your life. Trust. See, I, my, my note said, in, in here you have to understand that the, 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 the weeds was poisonous. So don't you worry about it. God's going to finish the work that he started. That's why you have to ask this question. But how did you get here? Is this a work that God started? Will would have said this way. Whatever you're doing, is God the author of it? Where, how did you get here? How, uh, 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 what are you leaning on? What were you leaning on? Are you leaning on ministry, service, those things, fellowship? All that's going to get tested. To, 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 to bring you to the, the, the recognition of what you're really leaning on. And if you can accept the reveal that comes in the space of recognition and you can go into acceptance, you can start moving up that, that, that seasonal climb that we were talking about. But we get stuck somewhere. Because I want you to hear this, and I'll show you the next slide. Faith is just the beginning. That's not the end all, just the beginning. The thing about weeds, and here's a note I had from somewhere, it, look, weeds, it looked like wheat in the early stages. See, in the early stages, it looks like wheat. You know what that means? Over and over again, what you hear, you have to wait. You have to trust. In the early stages, the weeds look like wheat. See, this is why love has to be fearless. Because what will stop your flow of love at times is once you had this experience, right? And that experience where you thought something was weak and it turned out to be weak and now you vowed that you ain't never going to love nobody again. Now you suspicious and survival-minded and uh, stop your flow. No more joy. You know, the fruit, fruit of the spirit is love, what love, peace, patience, and joy. Look, 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 look what joy shows up. I need all that love, the peace, the patience, just for me to have some joy. But how do I get that peace if I don't, if I don't have faith in God? How do I get the peace that surpasses all my understanding? Because you don't need your peace. Mm -mm. In this world where everybody around us is being challenged, social media has the best of them caught up. Me meaning, meaning this, not all the social media, but some of the stories. See, that's why I guess, how, how did you get here? Did you get here by faith? See, you, you know, a couple of weeks I, a week ago, I said, and I've said this for years, that church, this ministry, is not a business. How did you get here? Because if you get here by faith, I don't have to tell you that. If you came into this ministry by faith, I don't have to tell you it's not a business. Because your faith in God would have already told you that. I don't have to tell you that. But I do it anyway. Because uh, 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 God gave some to be what uh, pastors and, and, and uh, apostles and prophets and teachers and pastors and evangelists. Why? why? To, 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 to build the saints up, to mature them, to equip them. The pastor is always, how are you going to know some things? Because like I said, if you don't come here by faith, this, this, this way by faith, there's just some things you ain't going to think about, you ain't going to chew on, you're not going to have your space when you need it. 
See, I I I, I remember when when Deron was uh, many many years ago before we did ministry, and we would have these conversations, um, just about what what it is, what leadership is, what a pastor is, what this is, what that is, because of the kind of ministry we we were a part of. And every and and, and pastors was passive. And I don't quite know where that came from. Because clearly, fact, in the word, Jesus said this about the shepherd. Oh, that shepherd cannot be passive because when the shepherd sees the wolf coming, the shepherd got to protect the sheep from the wolf. No passive person could do that. No passive person is going to do that because it's not easy to do. So we have these things, but if you don't come this way by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word, what are you trusting in? What is his holy word to you? What are you leaning on? So again, how do we get here? There's so many ways, but it starts with faith. And if it doesn't start there, then we have to get there. That's the beginning of something. The wheat look like the weeds look like wheat in their early stages. Why am I saying that to you? Because you're going to have to wait, and in that waiting, you're going to have to trust. And if we if, if, and, and if we if, if we don't surrender, then then our anxieties during those stages when the weeds look like wheat, you think they wheat. But you keep getting the, 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 the fruit of the weeds and just say, what the world? Then you get discouraged and you drop out. Versus trusting God. He said, but here's the deal. You can't pull it up. You want to trust me to do that. Do you, do you trust God to deliver you? Do you trust God to deliver you? In spaces that you don't even know you have delivered in, can you trust God to expose you to you? So that then you can take whatever that is and then uh, uh, cast that care on God? So that we, you, you can get to what God is really offering all of us as a, a, a family of believers? Here's another note. The fields were normally weeded in the spring, but if the weeds were discovered too late, one would risk uprooting the wheat with them. So, so what happens, right? Maybe for, for whatever reason, whatever reason, something, you stayed there in a mindset, in a heart set, in a behavior, in a place of choice, you stayed there too long. And now what happens is, unfortunately, because we have this physical natural age of, in my case, 59, we have this natural age of 59, we think that we can take this, this same thing uh, because we're that kind of grown in the natural realm that we're that kind of ready in the spiritual realm. And it may not be true. Most times it's not true. Listen. Can you handle it? Then it says they both have to grow up together. That that perfect, that that perfectly imperfect you and that flawed don't belong, don't have uh, that part of you that doesn't lead you to your best self. They had to grow up together. Listen, if that thing didn't get snatched early, if you didn't pull up those weeds early when 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 you know before they start resembling the the the, the, the wheat too much, then they gotta grow up together. What am I saying to you today? Let that happen. Don't be scared. God loves you. Sometimes this is where we become so afraid of ourselves because we know what we're doing secret, we know we did a secret. And there will come a day where God will reveal to you some motives, some fears, some, some, some choices that you made, some things that you've done, and you're not going to be proud of yourself. 
And that's when that adversary will come in and use that as an opportunity to bind you, tie your hands and feet, and keep you from doing the work, the, the, the love work on this earth. We, we ought to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. But what are we going to be transformed into? Another me? An old self? No, a new self. A new self. A, 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 a God son. A God daughter. That is now operating from, from with the DNA of God. That, that surging energy surging through our, 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 our bodies. And, and now we're using our limbs and our members and our parts and our mouth and our eyes and our ears. For God-fearing, God-centered, spirit-led, listening, hearing, doing, thinking. We don't start there. Listen, can you handle both of them growing together? Can you handle that? See, the adversary is hoping that you don't, you can't handle that. That you can't handle that you are a work in progress. That you can't handle that you do some, some, some bottom line, basic foul stuff. And the devil is hoping that you never, that you never know the part of God that will love you past that too. that will restore you past that too. That's why I say confess, confess your sins, your faults, one to another so you can be here. Because as long as that thing is hidden, and God, and, and hidden from the light, you ain't gonna know God on the level that God is trying to introduce himself to you. Then my uh, uh, other question is, oh, who are you when you feel like you don't even know yourself, right? So when you got this, the weeds and the wheat growing up together, and while you were asleep, while you were asleep, something crept, crept in there when you wasn't aware, when you wasn't woke, when you wasn't old enough to know, and now you got this, this thing, this, this, this tendency, this fear, this something that is happening, and you don't even know yourself. And let's say this, maybe you're not proud of yourself. Because there is a self, there's a part of you that's made in the image of God, and it is good. That's why Paul could say, Paul said, listen, the good I want to do, <coughs> when it comes to God's will, that's what I want to do. But because of whatever I'm going on and all this old stuff, I keep doing what I don't want to do. Are you in that space? Don't jump shit. Stay right there. Trust God to be a higher power to you. A power, a power higher than yours. That's all I'm saying. But this has to be experienced. <clears throat> this ain't head knowledge. This is heart. Got to go through that door. And on the other side of the door, I promise you, it's liberation from things you didn't even know you needed to be liberated from. But God, I know what you did. And he knew how these things got in. Let's keep going. Here's my other question. <clears throat> At the end of that scripture, it said that, you know, he said, can you wait for both of them to grow, grow together? My, my question to you would be, are you going to rush the process or trust the process? Are you going to rush the process or trust the process? You know how <clears throat> kids are? You know, you that kid who, by law, you can't drive, but you can't wait to do it, so you're going to go steal the car? Because you feel like you're old enough. Rushing the process, can't wait. Just can't wait. Just, just can't wait. But for us, if you come this far by faith, don't rush the process. Trust the process. Am I trusting the process? No, I'm trusting the God. 
I'm trusting God of the process. The same God that sees to it that, the, that, that a tree, that most of the trees in your yard or in your neighborhood get naked in the winter, stripped of all kinds of things that look like beauty, and has to trust the process. And for that tree that don't grow any, anything don't go back, it's, it, then, 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 it's, then it's time for it to go. But for the most part, <clears throat> that tree accepts what's, what's, what reality. Okay. God, you're able to continue to do this. Trust me, it is hard for someone who's been in ministry up and down, here and there. At some point, you know, you, you tell God, I know you did. First of all, God, can you do this? I, I don't know. Wild and all that. And then God say, um, you know, you know, you can trust this process. And it's really, really hard. To do. It's hard to do. This is why surrender is important. It's hard to do if you didn't start off with faith. And what's, what's the truth? Most of us didn't start off trusting God, right? We started off because God did something that we recognize that something happened to us. God did it. And then when God consistently did something, trust comes from somebody being consistent. Did you come this far by faith? Faith is trust. It's the same word for trust. Are you here because you trust God? Are you here because you trust the Ron and Jill? Are you here because you trust your cell group? Are you here because things are going to happen to any, it can happen to any one of us? Are you trusting God? And that looks like something. Let's go to slide three. What's your goal? I want to show you two, two, two things. And I hope this makes the point. Something happened, right? So you look at the Maslow chart. You get to see this. This is why you were sleeping. You ain't woke yet. The Maslow chart is un and, and, and Maslow would have said it himself. It was still evolving. There was there. There was it wasn't complete in, in the sense that there were some other things that was being discovered, but you didn't have time to put it all in there. And some people have put it in there. They call it transcendence. And I'll call that the second Peter part. But listen, if you were in a situation, how, how, while you were sleeping, what's motivating you? What's, what's the drive? What's your goal? Uh, 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 what happens when your basic needs aren't met? What happens when your basic needs not met, it's hard to get you to the place where psychologically you can enter into a belonging and a love, a belongingness and, and, and love needs kind of space. And sometimes you think you're in that space, but you're in that space like a survivor because the physiological needs, um, regular stuff or safety needs, security and safety wasn't met. But I want you to see the master chart for this the pyramid. I like to call this for this reason. The end all and the goal of this right here. That's just that's just that's just a natural situation. The goal is self fulfillment need, and God is saying, "I don't show up." Me, me, meaning this, meaning this. Um, God's way is that. You see what I'm trying to say. God's way is that although all of that happens to you and all, all, although all of that have a place in your life, that you don't get so attached to those things that you can't move past this. That you, that, that, that you get so attached to your physio physiological needs not being met that you are now in survival mode. Your safety needs not being met, so you're now operating not out of love, but out of fear. Um, uh, uh, you, 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 certain things didn't happen. So now your need to belong is driving you. N not love, but the fear 
of not belonging, but now wanting to belong. The fear of why you were sleeping, why you was long, young, younger, who wasn't in your life, your mama did wasn't there, your daddy wasn't there, and all of those people that were supposed to make these things happen for you wasn't there a certain way. And now your, your, your spiritual self know that that thing is necessary, but oftentimes now what happens is you begin to struggle. What happens is you, be, you begin to try to make those things come in your life. And I'm telling you, trust God with all of that. Trust God to make you feel safe his way. Trust God to, to uh, uh, provide your other needs. Trust God with uh, uh, when you feel like you don't belong to something. Trust God to love that area. Trust God in that area. Do all that by faith. When, 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 you're, when, they, when you don't feel so accomplished you, and, and, and your need, your esteem needs to challenge, because if that, take that down. Because if that happens and we don't get to the other side of faith, then we begin to do things, make decisions to try to secure ourselves and find ourselves on that particular pyramid when God has, to, has already told you, you have to transcend that. Put that back up. Because all of those things are not only going to happen, all of those things are going to be challenged. You know? I want you to see in 2 Peter 1 through 5. What do I want you to see? I want you to see that it started with faith and it ended in love. I want you to see that if, and, and, and the scripture is going to say, add to your faith goodness. Add to your goodness knowledge. Add to, and then keep adding self control. Then add, but the, the bottom line is you started with faith. And then you begin to add to those things because what is your goal? The goal is love. What is the goal on Maslow? Self-actualization, self-fulfillment. What is the goal from those who have come this far by faith? It's love. And you, I'm telling you, you need faith. You need trust in God to walk in goodness, to leave some things behind that was working for you, but was slick. You need, you need faith to help you when, when, when you're trying to get to know God with knowledge and you're trying to get to know God. You need faith to be there. To Remember, all, you're adding all of these things to faith. You need faith when you got to control yourself when someone, when, when something happens and you want to go and do your own thing, but you, but you want, but, 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 but you're choosing, you're choosing the fruit of the spirit with your self-control. You need faith to persevere and not to quit. You need a trust in God. You need to believe that that God, that God is for, when God is for you, um, who, who can stand against you? You need faith a trust in God to walk in godliness. In this world, you absolutely do. You need faith to help you with brotherly affection. You need a trust in God for relationships. You need faith to get to love. And what God is saying, while, while you're pressing to get to achieving one's full potential and your self-fulfillment needs, God said, I, I, my, my goal was to get you to love. Because when I saw all that was going in the world and all of these things was true, when I realized that the only thing that is going to um, penetrate this darkness in this world, in your household, is love, fearless love. And that love is you trusting God with all of it. Because if you don't, you're going to bail out. You're going to take matters in your own hands. And then you're going to sow those seeds in those seasons. Those very challenging seasons. And then if you're not careful, because when the seasons come, guess what? You can, you can want, and I said this before, you can want uh, springtime and summer to last. You can try to force it. Going out there in some um in, in, in Maryland, that is, or in the north, in some shorts because in the wintertime, because you refuse to enter that seat. Oh, you ain't gonna get sick. You ain't gonna change nothing. It's not gonna change anything. So trust God. Trust God with your relationships. It takes faith. 
But here's the question to you, because remember, this is about fearless love. What is your goal? Is your goal simply be your best self or is your goal love? Because they ain't saying. Is your goal to transition or is your goal to transform? What is it? Because both of them look like movement, but one is movement from the outside and the other one is movement from the inside that affects the outside. There's a, a saying that you can never put your feet in the same river twice. You know why? Because of the flow. Because even if you your old self, the water is new. So I'm going to call you that river. And if you are transformed by the renewal of your mind, you ain't got to leave your wife. You don't have to abandon your children. You don't have to keep blowing from job to job. You don't have to keep transitioning. Because sometimes the goal is not for you to transition in a physical way, but to transition, which is transformation in, a, in an inner spiritual way. God say, I, I'm trying to transform you. You keep, you, 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 you're not going to outrun this gym. It's not going to happen. Trust me. I said you will be, listen, you will be, be transformed by renewing of your mind. Not a new address. Not a new car. Not a new wife or a new husband because you, you know, because it, for whatever things that happen, somebody think it, 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 it may be better by the renewing of your mind because you're just going to take your old self into a new space. That thing on the outside doesn't have as much power over you as your inside has power to change the outside. The inside of you has the power to create a new environment and a new space and put a, put a new energy that can turn old things into a new creation. It's the power that we have. But what's your goal? Is your goal love? See, that, that glory that Will was talking about going up those stairs, that's love at the top of that step. That's love. And in order for us to get to love, look at all of those uh, uh, from the, uh, the, the, the pyramid for Peter, look at all of those things you got to bypass. You got to walk past, um, 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 be connected to, be um, affected by, um, connect to, just to get to love. Good relationships, bad relationships, great friendships, um, sad friendships, sorry friendships, family member that support us, some that's not. You ain't always going to get what you want. But what allows you to, 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 to keep moving, even when you don't get what you want, the way that you want, is faith. God, I'm trusting you. People will let you down. Yeah, they will. I've had this conversation. People are going to do stuff. You have to decide what kind of meaning are you going to give to it. What is it going to mean to you? Are you going to be like the tree in the wintertime? And what it's going to mean to you is, oh, I might look naked, but I'm resting. In God's eye, I'm resting. In the world's eyes, I'm not. I'm less this, I'm not that. In the world's eyes, I don't have. In God's eyes, I'm resting. And I'm resting, and I'm trusting God with my life. Are you ready for that? How did you get here? If you, did, if you didn't come this far by faith, you get to do it right now. You did. Right now, you could say, you know what? You know how people used to do back in the day? Oh, this is my grandmama church. This is my uncle. I came by friendship, family, blah, blah, blah. God said, okay. Right now, you can make the choice, God. I, I want to trust you. I want to trust you. All, all, of, all of my world has changed. But Father, you haven't changed. And go get a new world. That'll change too. Just like seasons change. We don't have any control over that. But what we can do is by faith. By faith. You can continue. Let's go to the next one. This one it says, read it with me. Let me get through this quickly now. For this very reason, now I'm reading 2 Peter 1, 5 and 10. You saw the pyramid, start at faith, and then love. Here we go. 
For this very reason, try your hardest to furnish your faith with goodness. Goodness with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with perseverance, perseverance with God is God this with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love. For if you have these qualities in abundance, here, here's what I, I, I don't want you to lose in seeing the pyramid. If you have those qualities in abundance and you're not going to get the abundance of them in one relationship or one trial or one experience or one incident, this is a lifetime of this is, this is, this is, that's the journey. Getting to know God better, finding, um, losing control, then surrendering to the spirit, to the Holy Spirit, to the spirit of truth, and then doing better the next time. That's the journey. That's the process of trust. But you're going to rush the process or you're going to trust the process. And some of us are rushing the process because we just don't like who we are when we, when, 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 when the truth finally exposed that our love was fearful. Uh, 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 we were, we still had fear in the space of God and God is love. As God moves us towards his fearless love, which is trust to me. Here we go. Verse seven. Godliness with brotherly affection, brotherly affection with love. Verse eight. If you have these qualities in abundance, if you have these qualities, but they keep you from being barren and unfruitful in the knowledge of your Lord, of the knowledge of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah. See, what are you trying to know? Are you trying to understand what God is doing through sending Jesus into the world? What, what fruit are you caring about? Because what Peter is saying to them is this, if you, if you trust if you start with faith and you trust that God, all of those things between faith and love is life. And if you would trust God with your life, starting with faith and you add to that faith. As you go through, you take that faith with you in every one of those situations. God, I'm going to take faith with me in goodness. I'm going to take faith with me in knowledge. I'm going to take faith with me in perseverance. I'm a, I'm, when it comes time for me to have self-control, when I don't want to have self-control, God, I am going to remember that I have come this far by faith, by trusting you. And I'm going to trust you uh, uh, not to say this. I'm going to trust that you, when you tell me the truth, no matter how bad it feels, I'm going to trust that you are for me, that you're doing something to me to do something through me, and you will also do something for me. All of this, I'm going to trust. Because otherwise, it is going to be hard. And any one of those things in that first Peter chapter that I just read, self-control, perseverance, all of that will happen first, right? And then after that, uh, came godliness and brotherly affection. Because those relationships, they, you know, you trying to grow in each other's space. So, some, somebody going to have to do something real stupid in your space. In this life. And you're going to have to not let it stop you from doing what you got to do. For God, that is. By faith, that is. Connects to who God is and what God is doing, that is. But we'll get somewhere. Here we go. Verse 9. Put that back up, please. Listen, verse eight says, for if you have these qualities in abundance, so don't run away from this stuff, right? Because what God is saying is these are the things that, that, that when you don't persevere in this, these areas, you become unfruitful. You become barren. And then you find yourself, I don't know what I, what's my purpose? What's my, I say, I want to tell it to you, but you got your own way of doing things. I have a way. And there is a way to see right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. God said, I have a way. And, and, and my word is it, in there. It's in there. But are you, ready, are you ready to trust me with your life? Here we go. Indeed, verse 9, whoever lacks them, these same things, is blind, so short-sighted that he forgets that his past sins have, have been washed away. Uh, how do we become so blind? That's what I said. What, what, how did you get here? How do we become so blind that we forget that our past sins have been washed away? Sometimes, that's why I call this a spiritual check-in and a check-up. Sometimes you have to step back and see where God brought you from so that you can 
uh, 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 hold on to, 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 to what they say, God's unchanging hand to get further. Then he says, therefore, brothers, try even harder to make your being called and chosen a certainty. Do that. I have to do that by choice. For if you keep doing this, you will never stumble. Do you believe that? Not, not the world seeing you stumble, but you will never stumble. You may walk, you may have some, some noodle legs, you may feel weak, but not stumble. Not, not make choices that's far outside of being God-fearing, God-centered and spirit-led. I said, if you do this, you will not stumble. Listen to this. Thus, you will be generously supplied with, su supply with everything you need to enter the kingdom. God said, listen, for that faith to that love, don't let them things in between faith and love knock you out. Don't let the, the fact that you don't feel, um, I, I feel abandoned. Listen, even Jesus said, you know what Jesus said? Uh, Father, why have you forsaken me? Jesus felt something. But you know what comes after that? It said, then he yielded his spirit. That's it. Feel it. Yield. Feel it. Yield. Feel it. Don't, don't go to bus still. Don't keep talking about it. And I'm not saying there ain't a matter, but I'm saying make your last time for pastor. Don't let the world tell you that you got to, you know, this my truth. Don't be too attached to that. Don't be so attached to that, that God's truth, you can't get to God's truth. Don't let the world's thoughts and, 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 and wisdom be your measure. He said, if you do these things, thus you will be generously supplied with everything you need to enter the eternal kingdom of our Lord and deliverer. You see, in between that faith, all, all of that stuff, all the why you would sleep, you didn't see it coming. I didn't know what's happening. God said, listen here. Listen here. You in the winter, you can, you, can, you can rest in me. But still serve me. And don't find yourself sitting on that sofa like a child, pouting with your hands crossed, because you ain't getting what you want to get. It ain't, you don't feel the way you want to feel. He said, when I knock on the door, open it immediately. Stop rehearsing these things because the world says it's okay. God ain't looking for our rituals. He wants our righteousness. He don't want us to, 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 to you know, uh, this is what the, everybody said you do. No, 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 no. Listen, if you can have a fast turnaround, have the fastest turnaround you could possibly have. God said, listen, those, those people, I knock on the door, they open it immediately. That's our goal, God. I, I, I want to trust you so much that I want to open that scary door immediately. Not because I'm not going to be scared, but because I trust you. See, some, listen, we want a resurrection without a death. There's no such thing. We want God, God resurrected with me. Okay, I got to die, but I don't want to feel like it. Yeah, you are. Um, I, we, we, want, we want a sacrifice that don't, that, that don't cause us to give something that we don't want to give. That's just giving. Sacrifice is actually giving what you really don't want to give. Give me something uh, 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 that you 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 could do something else with. Sacrifice will always feel like it's coming out of a lack. But we want these feelings. When God said facts, this I sent you the spirit of truth. And that spirit of truth will comfort you. But it's not going to comfort you by not telling you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth and I'm going to comfort both. How did you get here? If you came this far by faith, keep coming. If you came this way by some other way and you were asleep and now you woke, wake up. Wake up. And then continue this thing by faith. And it may make you start over, but it's okay. You might be in the best position. Let's go to slide five. Listen to this. This is the same scripture. I, I really like it, but it's four different ones. It says, listen, to act without knowing how you function is not good. And if you rush ahead, you will miss, you will miss your goal. See, I want you to see that. 
Are you going to rush the process or trust the process? To act without knowing how you function, to not really discerning your own desires and being honest with yourself. And then you rush ahead because sometimes it takes a minute to be honest with yourself because those lies, you know, that we look like we, those lies sound like the truth now. Listen, desire without, bullet two, desire without knowledge is not good. And to be over hasty is to sin and miss the mark. See, don't act without knowing how you function. Chill. Take a minute. Let the, let the truth have its, its, its time in your space. You're going to have to. It is not good to have zeal without knowledge, nor to be hasty and miss the way. How are we missing the way? How are we missing the goal? Because when that truth comes, the, the, the desire, the justified desire to, 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 to try to put our truth side, you know, beside the truth of God, you know, th 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 that's not new. That's not new. But, you know, the, the desire to rush ahead and just get past that icky feeling, I get it. But if you do that, you're going to miss the road. Trust God with your sadness. Trust God with your bust out. Trust God with your wickedness. Trust God with your darkness. Trust God with your life. Flaws and all. Trust God with it. Last one. Also, it is not good for a soul to be without knowledge. To be without knowledge of what's really going on with you. And he sins who hastens with his feet. Next slide. you maintain are uh, you maintaining by childish faith or childlike faith you will, will say that thank you for, thank you for that brother will childish faith or childlike faith he said this in order to have continuous seasonal flow and start making glory moves i must adopt the attitude of when i first believe but walk in the maturity gain in those different seasons he said Quote, in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities, but in the expert's mind, there are few. What am I trying to say to you? See, see, that childlike faith still have possibilities, still believe. You came this, listen, uh, 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 has your friendships become more meaningful for you than, than the spirit of truth? Has your family become more so mean to you that the truth is not God anymore? God is truth. You want to, how do I serve God? God is truth. He already told you, this is my spirit. My Holy Spirit is coming for me. And how do you know it? It's the spirit of truth. So this childlike, childish faith, wishful thinking, talking about God, um, but not childlike faith. Childlike faith understands this. It, because in the beginning, this is how children is. It's just possibilities. But once you go through, I'm still, I, I still have my, my mind on this Maslow, um, I'm on the other Peter, second Peter chart, um, um a pyramid, because in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities. See, that's childlike faith right there. Your children come, you flaws and all. Don't flinch. Don't think anything is wrong with it. God said, come to me like that. But don't be childish now. Now, children will lie. That's the, don't you go that route. Now, that's being childish. God said, no, come to me. But know who you're talking to. One of them, Will or Felicia, ever say, know who you're talking to. Know that the one that you're talking to, nothing can be hidden from it. So you might as well not treat them like a human being that you can create some fantastic story for. But you can't create a fantastic story for me. And I ain't even so mad at you. for. I, I'm not even going to desert you for trying. I'm just going to send the spirit of truth to help you. Send you a helper. A counselor. That's what I'm going to do. But in the beginning, it's possibilities. That's why our faith has to remain childlike. We have to continue to be in a space that we're willing to learn. 
to go through seasons. You didn't reach it yet. That's, that's, ch children know they're not grown. Children know they're depending on that, that, that you pay the rent, even though sometimes they don't act like it with their demands. Children know that though. They know they don't have a job. They know they can't take care of themselves. God said, I'm the father of your spirit. That's the kind of faith you're going to you're gonna have. It's going to come to a time where all else, everybody, nothing is going to be there for you. Even the son of God said, Father, why have you forsaken me? You feel that way? You ain't alone? Why have you forsaken me? But what did he do after that feeling? Immediately yielded his spirit. Didn't resist him. Didn't fight. Just acknowledge the truth. Turn. No but still. Why have you forsaken me? Father. Didn't get an answer. Not the one that what we can read. What did he do? He yield his spirit. So oh God, that's what you do. Yield your spirit. Yield. Let God have your life. Fly seven. Read it with me. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not leave, lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame. You got to renounce those hidden things. Not walking in craftiness. You got to, nobody's telling you that we're not walking in craftiness unless they did a spiritual checkup. To know that they, they're not walking trans, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscious side of God. You got to let the truth manifest itself. You got to let it manifest itself. But if you rush the process and not trust the process, you're going to blow past this. And, you, and, and this is what we do. And then we make us some fantastic stories about how, why, when, and what this really is. I said, listen, I'm not trying to leave you that way. There's a manifestation of the truth. That's me in your space. Not Jill, but God in your space. It's the manifestation of the truth. Verse three. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. So he's saying, listen, the good news, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. How did your mind become blinded? Who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory, gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Listen, is the good news no longer good news to you? It's the good news, which is truth. A manifestation of the truth. Is that no longer good news to you? Has the, has the God of this age blinded your mind? So that you can't even see the light in the gospel, in the good news of the glory of Christ? The spirit of truth, you can't see the good news of that anymore? That's the goal of this adversary. That you that that your your flaws and your hiding and all those things get you so weighed down, so in a position that the very thing that has the power of God to free you, which is a manifestation of the truth, you reject. He said, "Why does that happen?" He said, "Because how, how is this good news veiled?" Uh, th this, this uncomfortable truth and same truth that'll set you free from being stuck. Why won't you let the truth condemn your, your vices? Let, let, let the truth, that the spirit of truth is going to judge and going to come in like a judge. It's going to feel like that. Allow it. Allow, the, allow it and then surrender. Trust, trust the process or you're going to rush the process because it ain't easy. But difficult doesn't mean impossible. There's no resurrection without a death. See, well. And there's no death without some level of pain or discomfort or change or difference. And God said, can you give that? Did you say this is killing me? Give that to me too. Give that to me. 
slide eight. But the Pharisees hearing it said, the man drives out demons only by with the help of Beelzebub, above the crystal demons. And knowing their thoughts, he said to them, that is Jesus, any kingdom that is divided against itself is being brought to desolation. Fact. Fact. Any kingdom that is divided against itself is already dying, even if you can't see it. Even if you can't see it. Here we go. Any kingdom that is divided against itself is being brought to desolation and laid waste. And no city or house divided against itself will last or continue to stand. Within your own household, it's the spirit of truth. What you're allowing to drive out those vices to heal you all, to, 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 to heal that, that, that abandonment you had, to heal uh, the insecurities you had, to heal the fact that you didn't feel safe, to heal the fact that your mother wasn't there, to heal the fact that you wanted your mother there, but she wasn't there, to heal the fact that your mother didn't hear you and stand up for you the way you wanted to, or your father didn't do it. Can the spirit of truth come in? And heal those things. Because if not, Satan is going to use that for another benefit. Here we go. It says, when well, the house divided against itself um, will last, or it will not last, it will continue to stay at the end of the day. And if Satan drives out Satan, he has become divided against himself and disunified. How then will his kingdom continue to stay? And if I drive out the demons by the help of the Elzebub, by whose help do your sons drive them out? What are you teaching your children or those people you have contact with? When how, how are you teaching them to deal with their flaws to, by the way you deal with yours? What, what message are you sending them? Are you sending them truth? What are we doing here? For this reason, they should be your judge. Verse 28. But if it is by the spirit of God that I drive out the demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you before you expected it. Are you driving out whatever it is that is got you in fearful faith instead of I mean, fearful love instead of fearless love? What's in that space and how are you driving it out? Because it's going to show up because the spirit of truth is going to reveal it. And the spirit of truth has revealed plenty of things to many of us, but instead of allowing that moment to transform us, we transition. We move here. We do that. And we just keep taking an old self into a space versus letting the spirit of truth get us to the place. We're going to pull some roots up from some old ideas and some old things we planted when we was in some season that we didn't recognize. Here we go. Verse 29. Or how can a person go into a strong man's house and carry off his goods? goods, the entire equipment of his house without first binding the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. You are being plundered, right? See, God is saying, Jesus said to them, listen, how can a strong man do this without first binding him? How, what's binding you? What blinded you? I, I promise you that whatever it is, if you would surrender into the spirit of faith, I mean, um, Two, it, 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 it will have to set you free. <coughs> what rules have been established in those seasons? Mm. Too long. How, who, how do your sons drive out their vices? How do they see you drive out your vices? Did they see you buy more stuff? Did they see you stack more money? What did they see? Did you use the world to drive it out? Did you, did you use stuff <clears throat> to help them get over something, help them not feel low, to make them feel better? Did you use comparison? Did you use competition? What did you use? Because the adversary don't care what you use as long as you don't use the spirit of truth to drive it out. How, how, what, what, was your, what truth, what light was in your space to transform you when you had your most recent transformation? And what is your most recent transformation done by the Spirit? Remember that Peter scripture said this, 
Uh, what what about the situation where you um, have forgotten all of the things you have been living from? Forgot that you were saved from those things. How did that happen to them? Because they didn't continue. But you got to start with faith. You got to start with faith. And no matter how you go through friends, family, fellowship, um, the goal is love. And the goal is love. Uh, uh, speaking the truth in love. The goal is love. It starts with faith, but the goal is love. And once you get to that love, that glory paste that Will was talking about, now you're ready. Now, now, now you're ready for the spirit to, 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 to use you even in greater ways. Last slide. Keep it right there. Here's one thing I want to say. What devices or vices are you using to cast out your spirit of abandonment, not belonging, fear, uh, uh, feeling less than? What spirit? Are you, what, what devices are you used to cast it out? Uh, to drive out the unclean spirit that has attached itself to your unlearned lessons or roots established in your previous seasons. What are you using? Now I want to bring you to a choices check point. This is where I am. When you're getting ready to do something, because I, I want to help you turn something around. If I were you and I was listening to me on the other side, I would say, God, what do I do? And I can't tell you all of what God's going to say to you, but I can share with you what got me through. First of all, I have to ask myself about my life. Am I living a God-fearing, God-centered, spirit-led life? First, Those first three has to happen. Jill, what you're getting ready to do, is it spirit-led? Is it God-centered or is it fear-centered? Is it God-fearing or is it uh, uh, survival? Fear from survival. Here's the two things that help you stay in love with all the things that you got, got, you're into that'll help you grow flaws and all. Here are the two things. You're getting ready to make a decision all of the old and the new, the wheat and the weed, all of that is surging through your body. The wheat looks like the weeds. You can't tell the difference you need to discern. Here's the two things. All you got to ask yourself is right now, whatever I'm doing, do I have the things of God in mind? Do, just ask yourself, do I have the things of God in mind? The next thing to ask yourself to, to go a little bit deeper, as, as, as the Lord would say, is whatever choices you can already make. Because sometimes, you know, we 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 good at, at them fantastic stories. Yeah, I have the things of God in mind. Then we go pull up some random scripture that sometimes all out of context or don't necessarily apply to us. So the second thing that should happen in the same space is, is this how, whatever you get ready to do, is this how you want to be treated? I guarantee you, if you just do these five things right here, this will center your life. Am I, do I fear God? Am I God fearing or man fearing? Am I in survival or am I in trust? Am I God centered? Am I trying to find my purpose and my passion and my this and my that? Or am I God centered and is God, uh, 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 love my goal? Am I being spirit led? Am I being led by truth? Not my truth. Truth. How do I get to that truth when I can't tell my truth from God's truth because they feel the same? Ask yourself, do you have the things of God in mind? Then ask yourself, okay, and you might say yes, okay, next layer. Whatever you can really do, is this how you want to be treated? Do you think that what you're doing in the, de the decision you made, will you do that to yourself and your faith? See, because sometimes we have been so blinded by that adversary during our, our moments of unbelief. He blinded us. He said, what? A blinded eyes of unbelievers. And in those times of our unbelief where we may not have learned the lessons, we've been living with something. Again. Ask yourself, 
be, 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 before you come up with your fantastic stories. We all have them. Would you like somebody to do that to you? I didn't write this. You know why this is here? Because God understood that if I don't get this, these people to really see what loving them, their neighbor as themselves really sounds like, then they won't get what I'm trying to get them to do and they won't move like I want them to move. Is this how you want to be treated? Luke 6, 31, put that back up for me. It says this, and just as you want men to do to you, you also to uh, you also do to them likewise. Take that down. This week, I pray that you start your morning off with slide nine. And I pray that you have that on a car and you take it with you to work when you get out your car before you walk in the building. God, I will be God fear today. I, I will function like I say I believe. God fearing, God sinner, spirit led. Father, I invite in the Holy Spirit to check me when I ask this question right now. With a, whoever I'm arguing with, whoever I'm pushing in, whatever I'm doing, when, I, when I'm making that phone call, um, do I have the things of God in mind? Or am I in survival or something or nothing? Last but not least. All right, God. I, I checked all that off. I said, let's go deeper. Whatever you get ready to say to somebody, whatever choices you get ready to make, are you okay if someone does that to you? Are you okay with it? I've done this. It's hard to get past this kind of life. And that's why when Jesus told some people who was doing all kinds of things, okay, whoever's without sin, throw the first stone. They put those rocks down and they walk away. Because the truth has that kind of power. I pray that this message bless you today. It was wonderful coming back and sharing with you. I had some other things, but of course I'm going to leave them alone. Um, I thank you. I pray that, that you take this and you don't just leave this as, as, as something to do or, or, or something to hear. This will break yokes in your life and transport you out of your flesh, uh, 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 habits, into the world where you will create new habits in the space of love, faith, love, and possibility. God bless you. It's time to advance the kingdom. We appreciate you. We thank you. We praise God for the word of God that came through. Uh, and all we got to do is go to advancing the kingdom. I'm going to pray because what the Lord spoke today, you're going to have to check in with the Holy Spirit and unpack that. And that's a great thing. That's a beautiful thing. But every time we have opportunity to grow, it is so wonderful. So let us pray. We thank God for what you've done, Lord, for how you brought our pastor back live and in living color and bringing the word of God so forcefully, so powerfully. Lord, let us remember, let us go back and let us take step by step and ask ourselves those questions. Father God, you can do what no one else can do. You can heal, you can transcend us, you can guide us, you can protect us, and you can give us what we ought to have every step of the way. And you are truth and truth is a traveling partner. And we thank you for that. It can go everywhere we go. We appreciate the love you gave us, that you share for us, that you sent your son to die for us. We thank you, God, for today, what you have done in our lives, what you have opened our minds and our ears and our hearts. We thank you and we praise you. And in Jesus' name, we pray this prayer. Amen. <laughs>